Hello there, welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today, we're going to draw Miguel and Dante from Coco. So come on, let's get started. Guys, before we get started, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll stay on top of all of my videos that come up. Happy Dia de los Muertos. In honor of Day of the Dead, we're going to draw Miguel and Dante from Coco. So without further ado, let's dive right on in. Okay, so when we start drawing Miguel, what we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna wanna start with a circle. And because of the reference that I'm using, has his head cocked to the side. We're going to draw that vertical axis line on an angle, just like so. And now that we have that, what I'm going to want to do is draw in his whole head shape before I do anything else. So we've got this kind of egg shape here, but because he's a young boy, in character design, we like to give them nice full cheeks. It helps to show expressiveness in, in uh, younger characters. Okay. And now that I get that, I'm going to just fill that shape in a little bit. And because his head is cocked to the side a little bit, but he's almost looking right at us, right? So I'm going to draw in his horizontal axis line right there. That'll show us where to set the eyes down. Now with Miguel, his eyes are situated almost in eye width apart. So what I do is I mark off the center lines on those eyes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in those eye shapes like so. Don't worry, I'll do it again on this side. So we've got, got to keep them kind of the same height here, right? Just like that. And let's see, yeah. So we'll bring it over like this. I'm using reference, but I'm changing it up ever so slightly. Okay. Now, so we've got that in there, let's draw in the nose. So the nose is going to be a little higher than halfway down from the eye line to the chin. So halfway would be here. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. And his nose is right out here, just like that. Okay, so now that I've got his basic shape of his nose, I drew it in very lightly because I'm going to erase most of those lines. There we go. So we've got the bridge of his nose, which I will erase later. I'm going to bring that up to show us where his eyebrows will begin. His eyebrows will be shaped like this. Oh, that's too thick. There we go. Okay. So we got one there. And then his other side will go like that. Excellent. Miguel is a very expressive face. He furrows those eyebrows a lot. So let's give him that look in this drawing. So this eyebrow is kind of coming up a little bit. And it gets really thin at the end. I'm just going to shade that in a little bit. Like so. And I'll shade this one in because he would look awfully funny with only one eyebrow. Okay, now with his mouth, we're going to come down uh, about a third down from the nose to the chin. So if half, uh, one and two, excellent. 
Okay. So, when I draw Miguel's mouth, I'll first draw that little frown in the middle, and then I'll come up to a smile on the right-hand side. Okay, you wanna draw in that laugh line there, nice and nice and dark. And then we'll very lightly hint at the rest of that cheek line like that. Okay, now on this side of his mouth, we're gonna bring it up a little bit. Give him a little bit of a laugh line there. And then I'm gonna open his mouth on this side. All right, so now let's define that chin a little bit better. He's got a very narrow chin and it only comes down a little bit. Okay. And then on this side, yep, I already like that line. So now we don't want to forget that he has a dimple. And that dimple comes in just like that. And now let's move on to his ears. So we're going to go to his, the bottom of his nose and we're going to come on over here. Same thing on this side. The top of his ears will line up with the top of his eye. Now the shape of his ear will look a lot like that. Just like that. And then we can, because we're doing a line drawing of the character, I don't always draw in all of those creases inside the ear. So that right there will suffice. Just like so. And then I'm gonna come over here and draw in the hint of his other ear. Just like that. We're gonna cover a lot of that with hair. All right, from here what I'll do is draw in his neck. It's a thin neck. I'll draw in, just very lightly, that scoop neck of his shirt. From there, I'll just draw in the beginnings of his torso, like that. I'm not gonna continue on with that until after I've drawn in Dante, but before I get into that, let's throw in some hair. So he has all these hairs that come across his forehead. Now you don't want to draw in every individual hair because that will end up looking very messy in an illustration. So you pick and choose which areas of hair to draw. As long as you have the right shape and you use more shading than you would um, individual hair strands, it'll be a very successful looking drawing. Okay, so I've got that right there, his hair parts over here. So, make sure you keep that rounded shape there and make sure that his sideburns line up. And give him some stray hairs here. And some stray hairs like that. Some stray hairs there and there. All right, now before I get into the dog, I wanna put in his eyes. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw in these big round circles. Now, it's gonna fill in a majority of the, of the eye, but you wanna make sure that that circle goes beyond the eye shape. Because to draw, very, to draw successful eyes, you're going to wanna make sure that circle's nice and round and nice and full. Draw in another circle, just like that. And then, the light reflection, right there like that. I'm just gonna 
shade that in a little bit here. Okay, so I got that eye in there. I want to position this eye. Finding the iris and the pupil in your drawing, it takes some time to master, and sometimes it's a little trial and error as to where you position it, but with practice, be able to find those a whole lot faster. Okay, so now, now that I've got the eye in there, what I wanna do is I wanna darken in the top lines of the eye shape. You don't want to draw in full eyelashes because this is a boy we're drawing. We save the eyelashes for the females. So the way around that is to draw a thicker line on the top of his eye than on the bottom. Okay. All right. So if Miguel's head is about this size, we'll want to draw Dante's head roughly about that big. Start with that circle again. And now let's bring his head cocked up a little bit. And we'll want to draw that horizontal just like so. With Dante, his eyes are very, very wide open. He has vacant stares that used to baffle me when I was first learning how to draw him. So now that we've got that in there, we can draw in the eye shapes. Because he's a dog, we want that point shape there on the inside of the eye socket. we do is we take that circle that we draw and kind of flatten out the bottom a little bit. Make sure you round the corner of his eye and then we're just going to come in a little bit on the top of that circle and give him that eye shape just like that. Now he has these dark circles around his eye. Let's see here. He's not going to have that point on the inside because his nose comes out like so. Okay. Now, why did I draw his eyes in first? Because for me, the rest of his head kind of lines up around those eyes. This is a very different character than we're used to drawing, so you got to like I said, you gotta loosen up and let the character design do the work for you. Okay. So Dante's snout is kind of shaped like this. He's got a mouth that's wide open like this. Now that I've got that in there, I'm going to draw in his nose and then work my way down to his mouth. Okay. His nose shape seems to be the only consistent shape with other dogs in the Disney family. You might notice I'm loosening up quite a bit here <laughs> because I have no choice. If I'm not careful, I will correct the, the design again and that is incorrect. Okay. 
There we are. We'll give him some of those teeth. But I'm not drawing individual teeth, right? I'm drawing in the shape of individual teeth. It's all one white shape, just like that. Now, with his lower lip and jaw, I'm going to come in a little bit for his lip. And then, just like up above, draw in Try in singular shapes to represent multiple teeth. Once you start separating all the teeth, drawing each one individually, it's going to look really, really off. So we want to make sure that we keep those cartoony. So now I've got the head upright again. The reason I turned the page is so that we could give him that long tongue shape. And I need to know where gravity is going to take it. Okay. Yeah, that's about the right width right there, just like that. And now the crease down the center of the tongue, like that. And then because the tongue comes up like that, what I need to do, because I'm a little OCD, is I need to shade in the inside of this mouth. Shade that in, and then because his lips are dark, I will shade in his lips and make sure that they're darker than the inside of that mouth, just to separate that shape up a little bit. On both sides, just like that. Now that I have that in, I will come down and map out that neck shape. His neck is full of these folds and creases. Like so. Alright. Like that. Okay. Now the only things left to do on him, without going into all of the major detail, is to throw in some ears. Now drawing in a dog's ears, the ones that flop over, start with the start with the upper part, right? And then I come in with that flopped over one there. Now with the other ear, the other ear we're going to stand straight up. So we're going to come from here and I'm going to draw that like this. And then this, the back side will come out of the back of the head. I'll give the fold on the inside, but now I'm going to come up like that. I'm going to come down and out just like so. And now I'll put in that bite out of his ear, just like that. He's got a bunch of hairs that come out of his ear. And the only thing left to do here without putting in all the major detail is draw in that very vacant expression on his face. Okay, so his eyes the iris and the pupil will in no way fill in as much of his eyeball as with Miguel. But one thing you do want to make sure is that the light reflection out of his pupil is in the same direction as in Miguel's eyes. Because they have the same light source, so they have to have the same light reflection. Okay, I'm going to add in few whiskers. Not going to go too crazy on them, but I am going to skew them a little bit. And now that I've got him in, I know what I can do with the rest of Miguel. 
So what I'll do is I'll just give a hint of his hood on his hooded sweatshirt, just like that. And of course, it would really make more sense once I color it in, but that would be for a different tutorial. So I'm just gonna do that like that. Okay, and now all that's left is to sign it. I would love to see your drawings of Miguel and Dante. Please feel free to email them. The email address is in the description. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and throw some comments down below. All of that helps the channel greatly. I want to thank you so much. I've got some other videos for you to draw right here. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you later.